So welcome back to Feel Good Doha, a space where we have meaningful conversations on health, personal growth and leadership. And today we have Elizabeth Wood from Inspire Me Qatar. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be with you after a long time of disconnection. Yeah, so good to see you again. So Liz, my first question to you is, how do you feel good on a daily basis? How do I feel good on a daily, daily basis? Uh, I feel good when, when I'm aligned. Mm. Yeah, when I'm aligned. So alignment for me is when my head is in a clear space, when I have clarity, when my body is healthy and energized and when when spiritually I am I, I was about to say performing uh -huh. but I think that's not the right word I'd say spiritually when I, I am fed yeah so mm. so yeah feeling good for me is like an alignment or sync of those main things that's mm. what makes me I see. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. So Liz, you're the creator of Inspire Me Qatar, which is a wonderful um, space for coaching and self-development. And I wonder, how did you get into coaching and self-development in the first place? How did I get into it? Okay. So back in 2015, I, um, I had a lot of ideas, a lot of creative ideas. And I, I had a thought and I wondered, is there a, a job or a career or a person um, who does that, who supports others in gaining clarity? Um, mm. And at that point in my life, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of the deeper meaning of coaching. I was simply thinking of getting things done, having a mm -hmm. lot of action in my life, streamlining all these thousands of ideas that I had into a tangible result. So I guess I had a preconceived idea of coaching before I finally ended up studying it. But so the way I got into it was I hired myself a coach back in mm -hmm. 2015 with the intention to find and streamline a potential entrepreneur um, lifestyle. I had a full-time job, but I wanted more mm -hmm. and I wanted to use my creativity and my potential. So that's how it started for me. It was hiring a coach and then being mind blown, finding out that coaching is much deeper and much more profound than just someone organizing your life for you. Mm -hmm. That's in a nutshell how I found, mm -hmm. how I stumbled upon coaching. Yes. So you mentioned harnessing your creativity, mm -hmm. your potential. How are yeah. you doing that now? Okay. So obviously that was five years ago. Yeah. Um, at, so 2015, I was still working corporate side full time. Mm. The, you know, the typical, I'm not going to say nine to five because here it's like seven to three or seven mm -hmm. to four. Um, but I guess my journey began with that awareness, hiring a coach and then realizing, whoa, um, I, I actually got more out of it than I was expecting. Um, originally, I thought that coaching meant someone's going to give me some amazing advice, only to find out that coaches aren't allowed to give advice. It's a guidance. It's mm. not even guidance. It's like thought-provoking questions that support you in your empowerment and in your awareness. So mm. that, for me, was mind-blowing. And how, how I reached to this point today is, you know, Long story short, I opened Inspire Me two years later in 2017 mm -hmm. when I had finally um, got out of my comfort zone and decided to leave my, my full-time corporate job. Mm. And what I do today is just that. I coach, um, I coach others on deeper goals, um, mm -hmm. we would say, the underlying goals that at first, it, first light – and this happened to me at first light, one thinks that their goal is to boom and they'll say something, we call it superficial, yeah? We call mm -hmm. it a superficial goal. They will often, and I was one of them, 
bring a superficial goal to the table. Mm. And then what we do as coaches is we dig a little deeper, right? Mm. We say, hmm, okay, but what's going on really? <laughs> mm. So that's what I do now. Um, Inspire Me is education, coaching, and consultancy. Yeah. And um, we do free webinars for the community, um, obviously because of COVID, but before that it was in-person webinars and mm. private one-to-one -one coaching as well as human behavior consultancy and lots more. Mm -hmm. And what's something that you're excited about right now with Inspire Me? What am I excited about? Oh, uh, lots of things. So to name a few, I'll just say right now we have just finished our first ever homegrown cohort which lasted mm. six weeks. congratulations so, thank you thank you because um i purposely and consciously wanted to anchor that feeling that completion that accomplishment which i which i did which i don't mm -hmm. always do so i wanted to make sure i did that so saying this out loud to you is is doing that again so thank you the completion of the cohort um it was called, or rather it is called the art of self coaching. So it's something that we developed from scratch at Inspire Me to support those who maybe, you know, it's not the right time for them to hire a coach, perhaps mm -hmm. their vulnerability, um, you know, they're not there yet with their vulnerability to be able to hire a coach. So this course was to be a little bit more creative and say, you know what, what if, what if I self coach? Um, so I've done six weeks with a cohort, they've just graduated. And what I'm excited about is the next batch yes. and more yes. to come, other, other cohorts that never existed and now they do. So I'm really excited about what, what we have to offer. Yeah, that's amazing. And when is the next batch starting? So the next batch is Sunday, I believe the 23rd of August. So it's the second batch of um, the art of self-coaching. We, um, we delve into things like limiting beliefs, um, procrastination, and turn it into productivity. It's really focused around action, getting mm. things done and accountability. So that's probably what differs this course or this cohort from others is that we will be holding you accountable, um, uh, not in a, domineering way but in a you know honoring your values type way and and having this dynamic cohort of other like-minded individuals to kind of make you feel good along the journey mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i can sense the the energy the passion you have for this for this new project and it's really amazing and i can't wait to see the well the people and the results and i'm also curious to hear in your opinion, what's the most powerful tool coaching offers? Of course, there are many different, yes. different ones, but in your experience. What's the most powerful tool? In my experience, I would say um, has to be, it has to be trust and rapport. I mean, there are tools, there are toolkits, there are, you know, there are, copy paste kind of slides and models, which are great. They sometimes tap into your awareness and you get an aha moment right then and there. But what I've noticed that keeps coming out on top is if you have that deep connection, that trust and rapport with a coachee or a group of people immediately without even knowing them, or, you know, they might just be someone passing by you in the street. If, if you can connect with someone on a deeper level without actually saying much, mm. this it changes everything in a coaching call. Um, immediate rapport, um, the ability to have a non-judgmental lens and a non-judgmental approach. Um, all coaches will say the same thing. You know, all coaches will say, oh, "I'm not. I'm non-judgmental," but it's a feeling. So it kind of surpasses that. You know. All coaches and all health practitioners are, of course, ethically supposed to be non-judgmental, but we're talking about the feeling 
So I would say, I'd say the number one tool for me that keeps coming out on top is that if you deeply connect with your client or your coachee, your coaching journey and their empowerment will be on another level and, and they will, they will feel it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of a deeper connection, isn't it? That felt experience. Yes. It's an experience Mm. rather than a, a toolkit or a, Mm -hmm. you know, or a model. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. And well, I imagine you are, proud of your cohort of the, yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm proud because it's a I'd say it's a a living embodiment of creativity coming to life because I had even told myself oh you know lockdown who's gonna who's going to sign up for a course? You know, we have to have a hotel. We have to make people feel comfortable and pampered and coaching needs to be face to face when Mm -hmm. that's awesome when it is, it really is dynamic when it is, but you know, how are we using our creativity under these circumstances? And for me, it was like this challenge allowed me to realize some, some of my potential that I didn't know I had which was to dig in and say, what can we do with what we had, with what yeah. we have? It's like a, it was a practice what I preach moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, trying, I'm yeah. always trying to empower and inspire others. And then I'm thinking, well, what am I doing under the circumstances? So the cohort was really a challenge to myself and my teammates and my business partner. Mm-hmm. So kind of just take it to the next level and say, look, let's still deliver mm. and give value, give back and enjoy the process and and that's why i'm proud yeah yeah it's beautiful how many participants did you have so we we had 12 and what we did is we put them in accountability partners so the week so it was every week and the week between the coaching sessions they had an accountability partner to go over their week or to actually we say, hey, you know, by the way, it's coming up, it's Sunday soon. Have you done the thing that you said you would do? So sometimes when we have a partner in crime, we sometimes get that little bit more motivated to be like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to post it on the group. And when Sunday comes, I'm going to talk all about um, how this week has been for me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Liz, what's something else that you're proud of that not many people know about? Something I'm proud of that not many people know about. I have to stretch my mind there because mm-hmm. proud of some people know of the things that I am proud of. Um, but the things that I'm, not many people know of. Okay, so I'd say resilience. I'm proud of my resilience. Um, um, yeah, I'm proud of um, the fact that I worked hard and strong, hard and strong to get to embracing my, I'm not even going to say identity, I'm going to say identities. Yes, identities. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because um, everyone goes through this in their own way, but like, I think resilience for me is the value that I'm proud of the most because mm. it's the ability to bounce back from double, you know, like double taking on yourself, myself, mm. um, double taking on, Oh, do I really like that? Is that really me? Am I just doing that because it's expected of me or I'm from that, that culture or that place? Um, do I really, really believe in that thing? Or did I, did I get manipulated or, influenced even if positive yeah so it's really that resilience of you know what i am happy where i am and who i am and that multifaceted kind of identities the multi identities and i can now take a deep breath and say resilience allowed me to be these versions of myself yes yes i hear you because also from the outside sometimes we see people like you 
like me even, coaches, people who are in this role of uh, support, guidance. Um, and we might have this image. Yeah. Uh, but we forget that we're going through those internal processes and those breakdowns and breakthroughs and yeah. rediscovering sure. that, that resilience. Absolutely. I mean, um, for everyone listening, you should know that there's no such thing as someone who's got all their, you know, stuff together. Yeah. No such thing. Where everyone has a story. Some people have multiple stories that, for whatever reason, they choose or they do not choose to disclose, or be vulnerable on them. But you'd be surprised what lies beneath, you know. Yeah. Um, and and that's why I love the quality of vulnerability. Um, I, I guess that would be my second. If, you, if your question was, what's that number one thing, it's trust and rapport, for me, the second one would be vulnerability. Because when you allow yourself to be, be vulnerable, the other person sees you, whoa, you went through that? Oh, and they kind of take, the, like you see it in their body language, they're like, oh, well, now I can tell you this, actually, because I know now you won't judge, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's a whole nother level when mm. you, with your coachee, or even if you're not coaching, if you're just being friends with someone, when they, when you both kind of let down that barrier, oof, mm -hmm. can be a completely different conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and speaking about vulnerability and resilience, mm. what's been your biggest lesson from COVID? Oh, biggest lesson from COVID. Create, just create reinvent mm. biggest lesson um is if you think that you're not creative think again <laughs> yeah. give yourself a chance mm. if you're one of those people that are like oh you know i'm good at stuff but i'm not that good challenge yourself on it yeah um covid for me was a chance to just slow right down and be like, okay, what can I do? Um, what am I capable of? Maybe you might resonate, Daniel, with that time that you had to write your book during COVID, right? Yeah, for me, time. yeah, for me, it was like who, you know, like rechecking in with myself. Um, mm -hmm. COVID was an, a time to, I'd say, reprocess the daily. Um, I'm trying to think of that, like the rat race. Yeah. So if I had been, you know, next day, next day, what do we do next? Okay, what's next? If I was on that kind of fast paced thing before COVID, COVID allowed me to be like, okay, let's take a breather. Do we have to just finish this, this, and this, and this? Or can we just ooh, take a breather and say, do I want to do that? You know, rechecking in. So COVID for me was uh, tapping into creativity. What was the other one? Reinventing myself. Yeah. And uh, away from the rat race towards um, a more reflective state. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And so you have your next cohort in August. Yep. End of August. End of August. Yeah. And then looking into the future, mm -hmm. where do you see yourself and inspire me in, in the near future? Global. <laughs> yes. Global. <laughs> global, global is the word. Oh, and you're like global healing. So I guess you got some kind of alignment there. Yeah. Um, do you know what? COVID was the catalyst to exponential success. Does that make sense? Like it makes sense to me. Boom, that's so, that's so powerful. COVID was the, what did I just say? COVID was the catalyst for exponential success. Yeah, because now I'm seeing it in my mind's eye, right? If I didn't have, if we all didn't have this sort of restriction of lockdown, our, our mind's juices and our creativity and in my particular case, 
to think of an online cohort and to execute it would never have been something I would have bothered to do. I might, that might have come later, um, but it never would maybe wouldn't have become into fruition. So now it has come alive. Now I'm thinking, oh, you know what, if I do more of these, it's open globally, right? People from different countries can join. And on the past, this last cohort that we had, we had people from Germany, obviously Germany, Qatar, Philippines, and England, which couldn't have happened if it was locally based in a hotel room or, you know, you know, in the park or something. Yeah. So exponent exponential success here, meaning there's no limit to where we can take this message to where we mm. can empower and provide cohorts for people globally. So that's what I'm excited about is the fact that we can pitch these cohorts to anyone around the world, so long as they have internet and drive yeah. and, uh, you know, global. That's, yeah. that's where I see it. <laughs> I love it. COVID was a catalyst for exponential success. Yes. Yeah. Global expansion. Yeah. Liz, my last question sure. for now. Sure. If you had a megaphone and you could broadcast a message to Qatar and the world, oh. <laughs> what's your message? <laughs> what's your message for what's the people of Qatar and, and the world? I could only have one. <laughs> One yeah. like, one, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> I would start by saying, um, you have all the answers within yourself. You have all the answers within yourself. Just a matter of awareness, consciousness, um, and giving yourself time to grow. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the empowerment here in order to be empowered, everyone who's listening to my, on my, on my megaphone, in order to reach true empowerment, it is almost going away from advice and towards inner reflection. Yeah. Away from other people's advice because other people are not you. Other people haven't lived what you've lived. Yeah, that's, that was, that was yeah, thing. that's <laughs> powerful. I like it. You have all the answers within you. Give yourself time to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need someone to support you along the way, sure. Get your coach, get your coach, get your friend. But the key thing here would be the coach or the friend shouldn't be, shouldn't be your answer, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be, they shouldn't be your advice line because that fosters potential codependency. Yeah. Real empowerment is when you really, really, truly are satisfied with yourself and the answers that make sense to you under the circumstances at this very moment you know, without this pressure of expectations from others. Yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, Liz, this has been a great joy and a powerful reminder for yeah. me. Thank you. <laughs> um, where can people find you and receive your, your support, your wisdom, your coaching? So guys, you can find me at inspire me qa or one word that's on instagram as well as facebook um you know my website is already tagged there at uh, so www.inspiremeqa and you can find us physically our physical location our offices um canot courtier um regis business center the pearl um right above nia yoga and evergreen we're upstairs from there uh, that's if you want to get in touch with us physically. And um, 
just check out my Instagram page for more updates. And every single Tuesday, every Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, 6.30 p.m., we go live on the Zoom webinar for personal development topics, ranging from, you name it, assertiveness, confidence, productivity, um, authentic self, values, ugh, everything. Every week there's a new post and you can join for free. And so that that's my CSR program to give back to the people of Qatar and beyond. So you can always find us and, and get a feeling for what it's like at Inspire Me. Yeah. So go out there and get some coaching people. Yeah. Connect to um, Inspire Me Qatar and connect to yourself and your own wisdom. Yes, please. Liz, thank you thank for you, being Anna. here. Thank you so it's been much. A great joy. And <laughs> we will see you soon. All right. <laughs>